awful cold to be out here in the morning. Not really. And what are we doing? Remember the secret to keeping warm is working? Keep, yeah. That's why I'm always overheating. <laughs> are you? Yes. We got heat exhaustion around here. Okay, I guess I need like scissors, scissors. Or you can just kind of poke a hole in it with a sharp end. Yeah. I also need a hair tie. Um, so, now that my garden, gardens are weeded and edged and ready to go for the season, I just need the weather to warm up because this spring is just ridiculous. Like freezing cold, ridiculous. Still 30s. Normally I'm bringing out my vegetable plants to get some sun and putting them back in at night. I can't even do that. It doesn't even get warm enough during the day for a low time temperature. So it's annoying. Um, anyway, let's get going. So here's what I do for this compilation of beautiful bloom every spring. It is a little cold. That's why you should cold. leave your hair down. You know it's true, but I can't I can't work with it in my face all the time. Just... It cover up those ears. <sighs> then I wouldn't be able to hear your sweet voice. Yes. All right. So plant tone. I just use the general all purpose all purpose plant tone. Um, I've used this for I think since I began doing this some, since my garden was wee big and. When, they, when everyone asks, oh, what, what fertilizer do you use and how do you apply it? Ooh, no fertilizer on the on the sedums. I'm talking and yapping, but they don't want to be fertilized. So we'll go this way. So this is what I do. There's no special amount I do. I don't know what the recommendations on the bag are, but you should follow them if you're a little less uh trusting on yourself to fertilize but honestly this is what it gets it gets a little bit of a a weave kind of looks like when you walk in the house with uh your muddy boots on it's the same I, I thing you do in the living room i do a wonderful weave so like what so exactly gonna... is this plant tone it's fertilizer basically a whole bunch of nutrients going back into the soil because every year obviously these plants are taking all the nutrition out of the soil and you have to replenish it right so in order for the soil to make the fertilizer available you have to have lots of organic matter in your soil and you have to fertilize so i add compost to help with that process and this is the food. So if, the more, if you feed your plants, actually, if you don't feed your plants, they may do okay. But after a while, you're gonna notice a difference. If you haven't fertilized for a couple years and then you fertilize and you're gonna be like, wow, I had an amazing year. Um, it's important to fertilize. It's important to have good, healthy soil and it's important to have your husband help you. Yes, definitely. So, so what's the difference between compost and fertilizer? Like, why we, why oh, do you do? I just, I, you know what? I just had, went round and round with this because, you know, some people just say the only thing I do is add a layer of compost, which I do at a minimum of every other year, every year if I can, but most of the time it's every other year. And then I add composted mulch, which has compost in it. That is really to make your soil really healthy and to make the, um, like all these micro microorganisms in your soil, they're gonna break down that organic matter and then they're gonna, it's gonna allow the soil to, to or the plant to take up nu nutrients near the roots. So there's like, soil health is like 1000% um, important because your plants depend on it. If your soil is crappy, it doesn't matter how much fertilizer, how much, organic matter you're going to put into it you have to really work that in you have to have workable um you know you have to have aerated soil you have to have moisture you have to have um just really 
loamy soil in order for your plant to take up the most nutrients that it can. And the way you do that is with compost and the way you get the nutrients is fertilizer. So that's, it's sort of like this, um, it's all a process. Like it's working your soil every year. I didn't start with good soil. I started with our crappy native clay, hard compacted soil. And I had started over here with this garden. I think there was like a couple shrubs and you know, it was okay. I used to dig, it was so hard to dig in the soil. But what happened was I started putting a layer of compost and then the mulch and every year it sort of got easier and easier. And I also, at, on this side, brought in soil that was workable to begin with and then started planting. And I'll tell you what, it made a big difference. Now, this whole garden is workable. I can dig down easily about a foot. Um, and our soil is extra crappy because of the pug feces or no? Because of what? Pug feces. No. Well, yes, but no. Our soil is just, our native soil is just hard clay. It's just the nature of where we live in New York. Um, she missed the whole joke, folks. I didn't. I, didn't. I got the pug feces. I'm, <laughs> I'm ignoring it because it's not relevant. Crappy soil. I get Extra it. Extra crappy. I, I, I really do get the joke. Congratulations. It was funny. We will be adding a laugh track, ladies and gentlemen. Or less jokes. Well, come funny, on. Funny. Come on now. So this is basically what I do through the whole garden. I am layering it. You can see it in piles. I don't rake it in. Um, I do this every year and then I mulch on top of it. So it's basically layered for the last 12 years. Mul uh, compost, mulch, fertilizer, mulch, fertilizer, compost, fertilizer, mulch. <laughs> can you have too much? Uh, can you, can, you have too yeah. Um I, I opt for like... The organic stuff because it doesn't burn your plants if you over apply it but you can you can use too much fertilizer um i also use the neptune's harvest liquid emulsion so like right now peonies have the buds they're making the buds let me show you in my nice little unmulched little ring of peonies here so right now inside here are the buds so as you can see i have quite a few buds coming um, now is when I'm fertilizing with Neptune's Harvest because those buds I want to maximize. So the liquid uh, fish and seaweed emulsion, I'll make up the concentrate. I think it's um, an eighth of a cup of concentrate per gallon of water. And I'll give that a good dose of the whole, like I'll just give it the whole gallon, let it soak in. Then all of that is going to feed the plant. It's going to feed the green leaves. It's going to feed the bud production and you're going to have healthy blooms. Um, that stuff's like a miracle thing. If you ever have sick plants, just apply that, um, to the plant. And like, I don't put Neptune's Harvest all over everything at once. I do it specific to when the buds are being created. So the tree peonies, um, the allium, the, the herbaceous peonies, the intersectional peonies, all of those things right now are getting Neptune's Harvest. So I'm not doing the cone flowers because they're barely out of the ground and nothing's happening. They have to come up and have some substance first before I'm gonna fertilize them. So that's sort of the difference in fertilizers I use and why I use multiple ones. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna do this to every garden I have and then I'm going to mulch. Get rid of that big old pile of eight yards over there. Yeah, it's a huge mountain of mulch this year. <laughs> mountain mulch, I like that name. My goodness. Mountain mulch. And I'm Maybe sure we're all going to have mulch. to do it today, right? Before it rains. Yeah. Key, the key. That's why we're kind of doing this now. This is a little early. Um, you're really supposed to wait until um, your ground is warm before you mulch. And we've had a really cold spring, but I have so much going on right now. And like for the next two months, including the, the garden tour that I'm like, I'm, I'm actually breaking rules this year and I'm mulching. It's gonna be 70, almost 70 today. Um, it's gonna rain every other day this week. And I am just, I know that that's gonna like make all of these plants go from we big to we big. So I'm gonna get this done now because I know it's happening this week. This is like, it's May 1st, people. It's exciting. It's like 
a warm and rainy May 1st week. So I'm oh. doing this now because this is going to make a big impression. And I don't want to... I don't want to mulch in between big plants. It's a pain in the butt. Mulching in between this stuff over here. Here comes our organic fertilizers. Oh my God. By the way, you never want to use dog or cat fertilizer. Only stuff that came from something that was alive at one point. Uh, like so organic green. So you shouldn't leave dog crap in your garden is no. what you're saying. Which is why you are going to get a first-hand lesson on removing it from my plants. Mm. Is that Jax why I got a pooper scooper as a birthday present? Jax loves... Yes, that thing works great. You don't have to bend over. Look, he's already looking. Out! Get out! I smell fertilizer. I know I went well, here. So that's the other thing. When you put your granular fertilizer down, they, they do love it. They tend to dig. So if you have dogs that are like, ooh fertilizer and they want to dig and they want to smell and roll in it mulch on top before you like do it the same day otherwise you're going to have a big mess on your hands if i were to leave this for a week we would have three dogs and big holes and messed up gardens because so, yeah plant I, food stinks yeah it does but it's so healthy Right? It looks like, like cat litter. Jack stinks, but he's healthy. Well, he's you, a little obese. now the cat's going to crap in the garden because it looks like you're throwing down some litter for it. Actually, it does look like litter. It kind of smells like litter. Yeah, use cat litter. Are you sure this isn't just a big scam? That I'm this, sure of it. I'm sure of it. That Perina isn't making plant tone? Nope. With use cat litter? Um, so yeah, our, by the way, our baby bluebirds, well, we don't have babies yet, but right now she's, uh, she's tolerating us, um, in the box. She's peeking her head out like, oh, now she just left. She's yeah. incubating the egg. So I have to be a little quiet and careful and do this fast because it's a little chilly and you don't want the eggs to go bad. She's incubating them. She's probably like, what are these people up so early for? I haven't even heard the rooster crow yet mm -hmm. and these two people you are out what? here I yapping needed, and working I needed and edged this garden not that long ago and there's already little patches of weeds you have to catch these things like little tiny weeds will turn into big cover crops if you let them so the good thing about this garden with weed control i don't have any weed barriers i have mulch and once it's done, like once I've got it really kind of under control with the weeds and I fertilize and I mulch, then I'm walking through and I'm actually every morning, every day. And yes, I know that's a little obsessive, but if you go just take a walk through your gardens and just, no, Cleo, Cleo, if you take a walk through the gardens, like, yeah, like Cleo, like Cleo is and just <laughs> Cleo, Cleo, <laughs> Cleo. Well, she's deaf, I told you. Well, anyway, if you take a walk through your gardens, you just, every time you see one sprout, that's how you manage it. And then eventually, if you cram your gardens like me, this is really, you're, you're, you're going to have a living mulch because no weeds are going to be able to sprout. Yes. Oh, look it. This is what happens. Right here. Uh-oh, Cleo. A day lily. Only one fan of it do I have. And it is now starting over. So what what are the earliest flowers that come out in spring? I do see we have a few. Daffodils. Oh, well, we have a whole bunch of tulips. Do you want to see? So this year, so those beautiful daffodils, and they come in every variety. White, well, I shouldn't say every variety, but they're generally whites, yellows, a little pink in the middle, a little orange. You can get some funny ones now, like these. What, what are these purple flowers these are over here? the sun, look. Oh. Those are hyacinths. See how they have an orange cup on them? They're kind of they're really pretty. They're they're blooming toward the toward the sun though, which is over there. Um, so these more hyacinths. These are pink hyacinths. Aren't those pretty? So they're only around in the spring, right? Are they? Yes, they're gonna they'll die back. I have a whole amount of like lots of red tulips. See one, two, three. I just put like a. Stink ton of 
tulips in there. I have to, I have to remember. Mm, you better watch your tulips. I know. I better watch my tulips. Look at these. More daffodils. Look at the, look at the cup on that. Look how many layers are in there. Is that not gorgeous? I mean, if they actually bloom toward me and not the, not the sun, it'd be great. And then I have little ones, like a little roundabout here. I put in more tulip buds. They're going to bloom here. Oh, these are pink. I'm not a fan of like the really pale pinks, but in spring, I think it's really amazing. I mean, any color in spring is amazing. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but tulips are what? How long does a tulip last? It's pretty much yeah, one and, and done. It, and it depends on like what varieties you get. Like if you want perennial or if you want perennial tulips, you have to do the Harwin or what is wrong with me? You have to do the Darwin hybrids. Darwin hybrids are perennial tulips. So they come up and bloom. You leave the foliage after they bloom. It feeds the bulb. And then the next year you should get either the same amount or more. Um, but if you get any of the specialty tulips, um, you know, the parrot tulips or the, all these fancy tulips, then you have to know that they're just like a one and done. You may get foliage the next year on some, but you're not going to get bloom. It's just, just the order new. You have to take them up and after they don't, they're done blooming, just lift the bulb out so you can plant more in the fall. Um, but if you're looking for them to perennialize and naturalize, definitely Darwin's are the way to go. They're not as fancy, but they're reliable and they're big. They have big, big blooms. So, so that's that. See, these peonies are all coming up nice. This is the, an example of a mulched garden. Yes, we did start mulching yesterday. Yes, so this is fun. It feels good. The sun on my face, the birds singing. We have to like go so she can get back in the box though. So I'm gonna go finish up. Good. Sounds great. Thanks for the lesson this yeah. early morning garden lesson, oh, honey. Wait. Can't wait for a long day of strenuous labor. Taking a break, are we? I'm snacking. When I'm does hungry. when does the employee get to take a break? Well, obviously you took one because you didn't know I was having one. Yeah, no. I noticed you were having one, so I decided to get it on film. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm out here busting my butt. I noticed you made lunch for the kids, and I'm over here slaving. Well. I didn't get a plate, so I took it upon myself to have ice cream. Ice cream and gardening. It just doesn't seem like it's going to... Well. A good combination, really. Yeah, and I didn't wash my hands either. So yeah, it looks like uh, we got a lot done this morning. We? Yeah, we. I can't give you a ton of credit because what did you fill? Two wheelbarrows? I filled too many wheelbarrows. No, two. About two. My back hurts. All my muscles ache. I can't even feel my eye triceps. <laughs> Ugh, hurts. But you don't care. You'll eat ice cream. Like our president. And I, then... I, I, do, I deserve ice cream, man. Yeah. It's only a little one. So this is, uh, this took what? Two hours of hard labor? Two hours. Um, it's work, we're working on four. Well, I did take a break. I will admit it. Yeah. But you won't let me put mulch down because you're afraid I'm going to hurt the plants. You putting mulch down is you dumping a wheelbarrow on my garden. I have to go around. It, it's a little, I'm probably a little OCD about my mulch, but you know what? Look how beautiful that is, though. You know, that looks like I did it, not you. Yeah, sometimes I would throw it on top of the plants and think that the rain would wash it off. But I guess you can't even get it on the leaves when you do it, or no? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. This is so good, though. I gotta tell you. Cream and coffee fudge ice cream. You can't even tell the dirt in there when it falls off my hand. Froze or burnt? Hmm? Freezer burnt. Froze or burnt? <laughs> <laughs> really? Because I already ate it. It's past tense. Mm. You can look it up. Okay. So what do you have planned for the rest of the afternoon? Do I get to take a break at all or? No, we gotta get this done. We, not just me. Yeah, I, I've we, already done. 
Look how beautiful that looks. The sun garden's done. It does look beautiful, but you know, this mountain of mulch, I'm gonna need rock climbing equipment to conquer this thing. I know, it's a lot of work, but man, you know what? It feels so good to get this done. Well, I think I have really, sunburn, so I can't do it anymore. Then it's really just, you always have a reason. Could you imagine if I had reasons like you, I wouldn't have gardens like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If people could only see what I look like right now. You look like a ghost. Yeah, the, the, the ghost of gardeners past. He has like 250 SPF sunblock on. Really? You like, want to show the audience? What? I do. There we are. What do you think of that? I think you look like a real cue ball now. We might have to call 911 because this stuff doesn't come off. <laughs> look, even sweat and what, tears. Why did you put it on so thick? It was for the kids. I didn't think it was going to turn white. What's the dog doing? What are you doing? Your ice cream. It, I don't blame her. It's good stuff, man. So yeah, this is how it is, folks. This is what I look like behind the scenes. It's when not I'm easy being your behind. It's not easy being your wife's arm candy. Yeah, it isn't easy being my wife's <laughs> arm candy. It hurts being my wife's arm candy. Look, <sighs> look at my eye triceps. Oh my god, really? Look at, look at how pale. Look. I know. It's almost like I have more color here. You know what? You should absolutely wear a tank top and get some sun on those while you're helping me today. You know what? I'd wear a muscle shirt, but I wouldn't want to embarrass any men out there, you know? Yeah. <sighs> they would just be blushing. All right, enough of this. Let's get ice cream breaks over. Oh, yeah? Well, that's time that'll... Time to go back to work. That'll teach you to interrupt me next time. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. We, we're, this isn't even going to be seen. All right, let's see what you can do. You want to... How was it? What I can do is pick up the, the glass that's all over the <laughs> steps here. Come on, dog. Enough. Break's over, everyone. Bye. Back to work. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll go get another load. Well, isn't that good? Hey, you're not supposed to pick that up. You can't chew that. Up. Oh. All right. He thinks he's going to go get the glass from the dog. Watch. Go get it. Go get it. Ah! <laughs> I did get it. Yes. <laughs> Nah, breaks over, folks. And you scared the bluebird out of the box. Oh, well, excuse me. I'm not going to change my whole lifestyle because of the bluebird. Yes, yes, you should. Back to work. Boy, you're a slave driver. Is this ever going to end this day or what? Uh, moving a little slower than I was. Yeah. Six hours and 28 wheelbarrow fulls later. Six hours, that would have been noon, and I started at 8.30. All right, well, so, I was never good at math. No. That's very helpful when I buy plants and balance your checkbook. Yes. So what are you doing now that we got everything done? It's going to rain tomorrow. So I'm putting rose stone on my clematis and my roses. So would you like to show everybody what I helped you do today? I'm too tired to even argue with you today. Are, Are you we... too tired to show everyone? Oh, slightly. Um, Look yeah. at that mulch job. Boy, that looks good. You know what? Nothing makes a garden look more pretty than mulch. I gotta tell you. It's just clean. I, um, I grew a bunch of echinacea from seed. And so I had a big patch back here where I had coleus um, last year, which is an annual. And so I just thought, you know what? It's on the sunnier side of the shade garden. So I put those in there and I have no idea what color they're gonna be because echinacea is a little weird when it germinates. It wants to go back to what, you know, it originally was and then, or you get a hybrid. So you never really know, but for now I had the plants and that's gonna go, um, it's going to kind of fill in around there. And I expect them to get like a foot high this year. Next year, they'll probably be like two to three feet tall, but I'll deal with that next year. Um, but yeah, everything just got a layer of mulch. This, I had to re-edge the front. Um, so I have to fill that in a little bit more with mulch just to make that a little smoother. Uh, but look, it's just nice. It's pretty. And all these little iron things that I have around my hostas it's working my dog has yet to step on anything so 
I'm sure I just jinxed myself, right, Zoe? Right? Duh! I'm a dog. She's like Kong in the garden. <laughs> she really is. Um, but everything, you know what? Everything's coming up. I didn't really lose too much. Some things look a little small. Um, but I think it's just because we've had a slow year. And you know what? 67 degrees today and mulch. Man, it looks like things are just like ready. Like, look at these hostas coming up. Look at the yellows. You know, look at that. And that. And that. You know, they're all just like, they grew today. It is amazing. Yeah. The difference in color when you put that mulch down. I'm telling you. And then I can see where things are. And then you can really get a sense for like, okay, this is shaping up. The Russian comfrey, that looks awesome this year. The what daffodils is that? are right kind of hiding it now. But yeah, that's that variegated plant. It's beautiful. Um, man, ruby spiders. Look how much they multiplied. That's gonna be a nice big clump. They don't bloom as prolific as they are, as they do when, you know, they're on the sunny side, but it still is really pretty. And I don't even care that it's a pop of red in here because it's so pretty when they bloom. That rose tone reeks. Oh man, it's me. I literally am covered in plant tone and rose tone. Do you wanna smell me? No. <laughs> I smell like a whole big bag of fertilizer. I'm not even kidding. It really could be me. So that's your body odor? No, it's rose tone. No, oh. I'm covered in it. Up, like when you do this stuff, it's very dusty, so it like it just absorbs on you. I, I, I am like I, I can smell it on me without this bag even being open. So, but anyway, we did that garden. We did the what did we do? Everything. And we did. And this then is, some. Oh, this is gonna open soon. Look, it's starting to leaf out. One day of nice weather, and it's gonna leaf out and bloom. It's gonna be gorgeous. Rising Sun Red Bud, my absolute favorite. I mean, everything's my favorite. But uh, yeah, so the patio garden got done. Our tulips are like trying to bloom. Um, yeah, look at the mess I made at the base of that rose over there. See it? Yeah, well. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going and doing all of my roses. Uh, but uh, yeah, so anyway, so this looks good. I can't wait to get my fountain back out here and working and oh so I did that let me go to the ow my back hurts <laughs> oh well, once I sit down tonight I'm not gonna be able to get back up um so these are all crosses there's two crosses in here this side is um one cross and this side is another cross and each one could be could look different but because i'm running out of time to get them in to see if they're going to bloom they're in the ground because i had i moved a, viber a viburnum from this spot so i had a pretty big opening and it gets decent sun here so you know i'm plugging them in wherever i can don't so this, fall this got done and oh every almost everything but the cottage garden got done and those two, you know, side gardens. But yeah, so all of this looks great. Look at this shrub. This is one that I had put in. It was really scraggly last year. And then I gave it a, a prune and now it's like filling out again. And look, it's a beautiful shape and it's gonna provide some shade to this stuff down here. The quince looks good. This is gonna flower soon. I have to take the tag off because I usually leave the tag on until I know it survives the winter. Um, this is a double take pink thornless um, quince. So that ought to be fun. And when did that show up here? Uh, year before last. Uh oh, Zoe, you got a sticky on your foot. <laughs> you got a sticky on your foot. All right. So anyway, this got done. I added some crosses in here. You can see the little tags I put in so I can remind myself exactly what they are. This garden looks so pretty when it's done. I, you know what? It's one of those gardens that kind of gets neglected because it's like small and in here. Um, but, oh, and this rock. So this rock was laying down and I had rocks on top of it. But look how pretty it is when it stands up. I don't know why this year it's now going to be the pyramid rock. So. It looks like my headstone from a hard day's worth of work. Oof. It was, a, it was a really rough today. Yeah, it was really rough. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely moving a little bit. I can't even pat myself on the back because it hurts oh, so bad. Oh, God. Well, it's like it my weekend me. is never going to end because I'm going to be weak all week. Uh, oh, 
yes. But it was well worth it. I kind of know how you feel when you're done. It's kind of like a workout. Yeah. People go to the gym, they work out, and then you feel really good after. Yeah, this is this is good. Like everything's down, you know, or the mulch is down. It got fertilized. Look at, but look how much this garden pops. Like look at the yellow, and then the red from the peonies, and just like oh, it's just so pretty. Everything looks so pretty. It feels like spring after my mopey week of 30s. I mean, look, how pretty is that? Oh, Zoe Zoe. April rain bring, brings back pain, right? <laughs> yes, that, that, that's gonna be my new slogan, yes. And then this got done, of course. So this is, man, this is a beast. And I still have some things to like plant where I lost some things. Uh, but for the most part, everything came back. I lost one day lily that wasn't hardy. It's a 5A and I knew it and it didn't come back. It was not happy and it was mushy. So there's no chance of it coming back. And then the red hot pokers. Those are a little temperamental here. I'm not exactly sure why. And they say they're hardy and my friend grows them right 10 minutes away. But for some reason, they don't want to be here. And then the euphorbia ascot rainbow. Only one looks somewhat alive. The other two are dead. They're still in there. But I have to figure out what I'm going to replace them with on the edges. So, but overall, man, I got some good stuff done. And the cottage garden has a layer of compost on it. So it actually looks like it got mulch, but it didn't. I did the rock garden. The tulips are going to bloom too. I mean, it's so nice. It's so much nicer when things are like done, even though you feel like yeah, but they're never done. You always have something to do. I know. I know. But it just feels good, right? It feels good. Everything is like, everything's good. I love it. It's, it's just, it looks, it feels better. And now all I have to do is walk around and pull weeds out of the gardens that are done. Watch out. You're going to step on my stuff. And then up, you know, I got a couple gardens I have to like shape, plant, and mulch and fertilize. Well, honey, it was an enjoyable day. day. One more day. I love spending my day watching you and me work. Yeah, I bet. It is fun to watch you work. Yeah, cause... yeah. It, we get a lot done when I'm the only one working. Well, come on now. Ugh. You know it, and I know it, and I think the fans know it. What? Know what? That I'm the man that makes it happen. Oh, my God. Are you know, I'm too argued if... I mean, I'm too argue to fight with you. I'm too tired to even speak correctly. Yeah, well. Oh, but it's gonna rain tomorrow. Everything got fertilized. Uh, everything's done. It feels good to have like a jump start because it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. This, yeah, this don't walk too far. They might see the grass. Oh, we got it. We have to. We have to call somebody in. I need backup for that. I'm not. I'm not shoveling soil, yeah. and I'm not. I'm not working on this. We're paying for this to get done. We go. You're paying for it. You you ruined it. You're paying for it to be fixed. Yeah, well. And you're too tired to argue with me. Why do I want to put a new lawn in when your dog keeps digging holes in it? You know what it. I might do? I might just do wildflowers here. Like, just do this whole thing, wildflowers. I don't have to worry that about it. That would look kind of weird, though, because don't wildflowers have to kind of grow high? Yeah, why not? So we'd be like walking through this path of high wildflowers. See, it sounds weird, but trust me, I wouldn't do an ugly thing to the to the house, would I? I wouldn't just do it. It may not be ugly, but we'd have to like try to avoid all these pollinators and bees and You don't avoid them. You bugs. enjoy them. You enjoy them. And you know what? The more pollinators we have, the better off your plants are. They need pollination. We need them. And yeah, and your garden over there looks pretty neglected. So. Yes, well, I'm still working on it. Unfortunately, I've been too busy <laughs> helping you. I know, but that is that is a uh, garden that needs to be, looks like it needs to be edged. Have you ever edged that garden? No, no. I haven't edged it. Needs As I fertilized. said, gardener's on vacation because might... he's been working with you. Mm. You might wanna you might wanna make yourself a checklist for this. I don't think I can do anything. Tours. I pulled a thigh sap this afternoon. <laughs> Can you please? Well. No, but don't even make me laugh. I'm, I'm like, limping. I have to go sit down, and once I do, I'm not getting back up. All right, well, maybe the kids will cook us dinner tonight. No, actually. Actually, isn't Blake working the barbecue right now? Uh, if he is, there's a lot of smoke coming from the back, so I think he started it and left. Well, we, we might want to go out back and check yeah. this out. 
All right, sounds great, honey. Can't wait to do it again next week. One more day of this, and then we can just sort of upkeep. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, All right, thanks, dear. Awesome. Yes.